So the last two weeks didn't have the most convincing wins in the world, but they were wins nonetheless, which of course did seal us a playoff spot. But if we were to win this game against the Jets here in week 18 and the Dolphins lost, whatever kind of miracle we need, we could actually jump all the way to the number three spot, maybe even the number two spot, depending on what the Chiefs do, which would also give us home field advantage for at least a game, maybe every game down the line, especially if the Ravens are to lose early on, perhaps. But regardless of that point, you got to at least win against the Jets to even have a chance of that happening. Of course, this will be a one game episode, and then we will have the stats and awards afterwards. So what the hell is going on here? I don't know what's going on, on my screen here. Uh, where is the standings? You can see it right here. It appears if we win, no matter what, we take the division back. Now, of course, you can see the Colts are number two seed and then the Chiefs at number three. So it's even worse than I thought. Instead of stealing the number two seed, we might even barely luckily have the fourth seed. Of course, uh, you know, we know what we need to do, which is win this game. Win this game against the Jets, who in theory don't have much to play for. Obviously, we know they do, right? Uh, Aaron Jones numbers, four touchdowns. Not the best in yards, but all those touchdowns are going to get it for him. Uh, and then Allen, kind of similar situation. All those touchdowns doing the job. Miles Garrett and uh, Deron Payne with some sacks. But yeah, if we win this game against the Jets, it appears at least that we are going to win the division. Obviously, let's take a look at the team first. We have a bunch of different stuff we need to look at, but in case you're new to the series, you want to see what the team looks like, this is what it looks like. It's actually looking pretty good. Drake May, 88 overall star dev, franchise level guy. Polk got back from injury, hasn't done a whole lot. Will say I worry with dev regression on because of the time he's missed, he might lose star dev. He very well could. You know, only 577 yards. Yards per catch are down. Touchdowns are up, though, believe it or not. So he might have had like a 20 touchdown season if not for the injury. Faulkner's been pretty damn good for us. Then we look at the defensive side of the ball where Beasley has taken over for Bentley and then Gamble's taken over for Duggar. It's a team on the come up. Still has a ways to go, but it is definitely looking promising as we are looking like we're going to have back-to-back -back playoff berths here. Let's take a look at the Jets' injury report. Our uh, you know opponents in this one and our division rivals haven't... Ooh, ooh. Ooh, broken collarbone for Garner. That might have just happened, too. It's a five-weeker for that. I mean, it's it's got to be kind of recent, it seems. But, uh, yeah, I want to see their team because things may have changed. It feels like it's been a long time since we played them. I can't remember exactly which week, but it does feel like a long time ago, in my opinion. Quarterback is rookie Justice Kelly. Not really sure what kind of season he's had this year, but we'll obviously get that when we get into the actual game. Brees Hall is obviously amazing. He's an X-Factor. Wide receiver Garrett Wilson's great. Mike Williams is still there. He's pretty good. Shahid is number three. A lot of speed for him. Tight end they need work on, obviously. Left tackle's amazing. Left guard's definitely uh, a work in progress. Center's pretty good. Right guard's pretty good. Right tackle, work in progress. Left end, solid. Right end, solid. DT's amazing. Left out is the wrong scheme. Mosley's still pretty good at his age. And then Barrett, the speedster, looks like a great number two with great change of direction. Quincy Williams is still doing it pretty well. Very fast, obviously. But corners definitely take a step back with Garner gone. But still got some decent speed in there. Just enough to get the job done. They're decent players. Quandre Diggs needs to be replaced. Chuck Clark needs to be replaced. Kicker needs to be replaced. Punter needs to be replaced. A lot of old going on in some of those positions. And... Yeah, we'll see if we can take advantage. Uh, obviously, going against this team without their uh, number one corner, you probably want to attack that. But as far as their offense goes, it seems like they only run the ball well. So we're going to listen to them. Outside run defense. Sam Darnold is their quarterback, as it freaking looks like. Uh, and then looking at their side of the ball for run for defense, it looks still really good. So like I said, I think that sauce injury was rather recent. They're very good at defending the pass. If you're going to run the ball, I don't know where you run it because Quentin's on the inside and then the outside's not too bad either. They got some pretty damn good players there. So they say to throw it short. I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen to what they got to say. And then, of course, all of these uh, focus players. And with that training, we actually have a couple of upgrades. Ramondre Stevenson. I think we've said that, you know, power back we're fine with. The plus two stiff arm is good enough. His juke move's not bad either already, to be fair. But let's go with elusive. Let's get that juke move even higher. And he can suit a spin move, which is actually pretty good too. I mean, he's a good running back. What do you want from him? Change direction up would be like the only thing I would ask for, but he's great. It's one of the best backs in the league by far. Uh, and then, of course, Faulkner. Possession has seemingly done a little bit more than vertical threat, so we're going to go with possession. Two to release is amazing. One to medium route. Two to catch in traffic. One to run blocks all right. It's not bad. 
course, pretty damn balanced player already. And then for Nick Cross, we're going to go with Hybrid. Let's go with Hybrid. Backup safety. Thought there was a chance maybe he would have been a starter. Could still be. You know, Jabril really regresses hard. Could be the starting free safety next year. Who knows? But that is basically that. We're going to do our staff stuff and head on in to the final game of Season 2, the regular season at least. And here it is, the final game. There easily could have been a snowy one. Obviously, those interceptions are pretty high. But unless we have one of the worst, not even one of the worst, the worst game in NFL history for a quarterback, we should at least finish on positive terms, touchdown to pick ratio-wise. The yards are obviously great. It's just too many turnovers this year compared to last year, without a doubt. You know, it was a growing season last year, but turning the ball over less then than we do now, and we have a better team, which is really just signs of mental errors more than, you know, roster uh, deficiencies, if you will. Obviously, the Jets, 6-10, and 10, their season's over no matter what, but they can make our lives a little bit more a hell. Obviously, with us being in the playoffs already, it's not going to be as exciting if they were to win, but still could instead of uh, us having the home field advantage, the you know, division title could drop us down to one of the low seeds where we don't play a single home game, even if we made it all the way to the Super Bowl. So definitely something to play for on that Jets radar, especially for the fans at home and uh, trying to end the season off right, which obviously we're trying to win that division, kind of let it slip. And yet here we are still with a chance to reclaim that title. Looking at the quarterback situation of the Jets, of course, a rookie quarterback, I think he's played all right for them, but I don't know about his actual numbers. 26 touchdowns, 20 picks, 3,300 yards. I mean, it's okay. But once again, like May, a lot of picks. Let's try to get this guy to throw more picks on the season than May. It's doable. No picks for May this game, and we throw this, you know, force this guy into five of them. He gets one already. Spin move to the outside. Does he have the speed? He does for the pick six on the first play from scrimmage. McKenzie. They call him greedy for a reason. I don't even know how many picks that is on the year. It's not a lot, but... I mean, it's not It's not, not a lot. It's just not unbelievable amounts. It is a lot. He's got to be in, like, the like the five to six range minimum, which is good. That's really good. All right. Just four more of those, and he has more picks than our guy. Which doesn't really prove anything, because this guy's a rookie. Our guy's not. Bar more huge play before behind the line of scrimmage. A gain of nothing. From the 30-yard line, inside handoff. We're kind of waiting around, but good thing... Because uh, Brees kind of waited around, too. He was trying to get away from us, but we we just waited. Gamble's an aggressive little man, let me tell you. The outside, curl route. He's on the run, and he steps confidently into a throwaway. That'll be a punt. It's better than a pick, but not by much. I say that, but it is by a lot. We just got a pick six. This is instead going to be us at the maybe, I don't know, 30-yard line. Oh, what a move. What a damn move to the 34-yard line. Beautiful return. And finally, Drake May gets to go out on the field, play a little bit of offense. We already know those yards, the touchdowns, the picks. Let's try to distance ourselves. If we can finish the season with 40 touchdowns, 25 picks, I can live with that. But at the same time, if we can win this game and still play it in the fashion of almost like a benching players moment because we have such a lead, I can live with that as we're going to take the sack. Wanted Polk knew the ball was going to be a really ugly one if I try to step into that throw. Decided last second, try to get to the tight end if I can. Got sacked. Got a couple of tight ends here. See if we can try to create something. There is going to be a wide open pole to spin to catch. It gains nine, blasted by Mosley. All right, from the 34-yard line, third and ten. Don't know if we had the time to throw to the tight end, and our guy doesn't even catch it anyways. That it'll be a punt. Their pass rush making us feel a little uneasy. Forcing us into stuff that, you know, we're not really comfortable with. Pause. Can't get over there, and that's going to be a really big play. Garrett Wilson still going, still going to the 46-yard line. Might be a case of going best on best, because while McKenzie did have a pick, I believe, on a Garrett Wilson curl route, Gonzalez's size makes more sense as Beasley kind of slows Brees down, gain a five still. But at the same time, I don't want to change into something so quick, because, oh, they got us reeling a little bit. Curl out. Nope, it's going to be a short out. Yeah, nice defense by Tavaya. Of course, Conklin's a superstar. Is that new? Like, did we know that already? Let's go to the press. Maybe even run Gamble in there if the running back decides not to run around, which he did. We're late, but that doesn't matter because we have enough pressure to stop the play from ever existing. Beasley and company with the sack and another punt for New York. Promising little drive, but the rookie 
and I believe it was it was Jelani Tavai. That's what I thought it was. For some reason, I thought it was Uche, but Jelani Tavai, they both bring him down, and that will be yet another punt. And we'll have the ball from the 36-yard line. No matter what I do, they just, the punters, they're just terrible against us. In trouble. Oh, my God. I don't know how that's not picked. I genuinely don't know how. It wasn't a bad read. It was just because of the situation of the throw angle it was a terrible decision. It's going to be a tough throw, but not really as Polk is going to catch it. Tries to bounce it outside. Can't to the 44. Looking good. Play action zone read. Uh, you know what? I think we actually have a chance to run here. It looks like they got two blitzers coming. That's fine. And they don't as Ramondre gains a yard if lucky. Sucks you can't change the angle of this run. Power, you got to cut it back in. I didn't really like our chances of getting engagements to the outside. Also, not sure what an engagement is. <laughs> Engagement, I suppose. Wheel from the tight end. Going to go quick throw as Polk is wide open. And even if he wasn't, we would have at least created a short fourth down situation. Might have been worth it. Didn't need to you know, worry about maybe it being worth it. It was definitely worth it. Play action booth from right to left. So it's going to be across the grain on the throw. It's going to be a tough throw. And wow, I can't believe he covered two routes, saw the deeper cross, and dropped back to that. Maybe they don't need a new safety. Like, that's genuinely ridiculous. It's like best in the league type stuff. He's going to be running right at Quentin, who just doesn't get off the line. And we create about four or five yards. It's not a great third and six situation, but it's a situation. They got that inside slant covered. Not covered well enough, though. And that ball is underthrown, giving the DB a chance to chase that ball back and swat it. It'll be a field goal. The field goal is hit. It'll be nearing the end of the first, up 10 against New York. We're not really finishing the way I was hoping we would in this game, but even without Saws, it is still a pretty good defense, especially D-line, which is where our struggles have been, our offensive line versus defensive lines. And we uh, only allow a three-yard run there. It was a chance for a lot more. So good job by the rookie Beasley to get in there. Start of the second quarter, we're up 10. And boy, apparently this was a long first quarter because it is all of a sudden really dark. Drake May sacked on the play, but also at the same time, pick six. For McKenzie. Yeah, what freaking time is it? It's like 4 o'clock all of a sudden. It's like, what are we doing? As, oh, it's a good cutback for Brees. Oh, my God. Can we get out there? Brees Hall to the 45-yard line. Finally finding a crease for Brees. Our run defense, for the most part, is usually pretty damn good, too. Hook. Oh, right into our zone. We hit stick and we miss. But the safety miss is worse. McKenzie saving a touchdown to the 8-yard line. What are we doing to ourselves, honestly? From the 50 all the way to the 8 to Mike Williams on like a short throw. He's not really the guy you should be giving up those big after the catch plays to. Second, oh my god. What a defensive play by Jones, though. I mean, I couldn't cover it. I had to cover the underneath, otherwise it's touchdown anyways. Jelani going against Conklin. Can't underestimate this guy. Oh god, can't underestimate the run game. There you go. Uche. Tavai already getting in there one time on a blitz. Try it again from the 11th, third and goal. Leaving the running back open. I don't mind it. That could be picked. Oh, my God. Was that Jones? Come on. Either way, we'll get the stop. It'll be a field goal. Could have been no points, but it's better than seven. And there's a flag on the kick. For the love of God. When? It's a chip shot. Let's look back at this. All right, we have this. Nah, nah, nah. Nothing's happening. All right. Oh, okay. I don't know what we're doing there, but sure. No field goal for them. It'll actually be an automatic first down to the outside. It's a little overthrown, but it should still be caught by Garrett Wilson. Special teams needs to get that out. And they booth reviewed it and called it a completed catch. And yeah, they did catch it. I mean, Garrett Wilson did catch it. All right, here we are, back out on offense. Stevenson on the inside handoff. We'll turn it into a gain of about six. And Caden Wallace, the replacement for the injured on when he was now injured. Got that crosser look. I do like this if you actually get time to throw, which we really don't. The drag type uh, route from... Du what did you just do to Polk's hole? I was about to say the drag type route from uh, Douglas was locked in. Polk, I felt like he's a bigger receiver. He has a chance of possession that potentially. That's a late read. Did he catch that? Oh, Douglas, what a throw and catch. 
And Caden Wallace, thankfully not injured long-term. Threw that just a slight bit too late, but thankfully it did not result in a bad. That's a tough throw and catch. What a catch by Polk, seven yards. And that will put Drake May over 4,000 on the season. Let's put that touchdowns into the 40-yard line, 40 touchdown mark if we can. There goes Faulkner. Finally getting him involved to the 41-yard line, first down. Back to inside zone, which we're not really going to get help from. We'll try to turn into anything we can for three. What do they say to, to oh yeah, a short pass? I was about to say, I thought they said to do run inside. Pretty good run lane finally as Stevenson falls forward for eight total. Safety's kind of like unaware of Baker, it seems. He drops back. Oh my god, he just, he ran the whole route. I didn't expect that. All right, if we want our uh, our, tut, our picks to not reach over 25, we can't throw another one. He looked like he was going to leave it, and he covered it the whole way. That's my fault. I mean, you can see the way he's playing it. At first, it's like he's going to let him pass, and he just doesn't. That's just good coverage, and he just never left it. I just basically threw it at the guy. He missed hard on that tackle lane. Second and six now. Pretty good start. And then the offense does what the offense does. McKenzie, please. Stay on our side of the field, if you don't mind. Bring in the heat. That's going to be picked off, McKenzie. Number two. Got to turn around, otherwise we would have been inside our own five. We don't want that, as McKenzie's going to take it all the way back to the 32 with ease. Greedy McKenzie getting greedy. That's what I'm talking about, baby. I didn't really look at the award race. Maybe I should have. We're in some trouble. I wanted to throw it. Can't. Trick May going out of bounds. Gets hit not really late, but, you know, we were obviously retreating. Stevenson on the inside zone. And we run it, like, right into him. Look at Stevenson fighting and spinning for a seven-yard gain. Two-minute warning. Double drag. See how they want to play it. Wide open to Douglas, who's got room inside. Nice to the 31-yard line. Finally a decent little find. Let's go verticals. Haven't really brought this many players on the field. Or this many receivers, I should say. I wanted it all. Slide. I wanted it all, so I stepped up. Didn't really like the throw. Maybe should have taken Faulkner. Maybe we can make it up to him on this play. Should have taken that curl sooner. Still would have had it, I think, but sacked. Almost. It's just tough, though. The pressure's been really harsh on us this season. Screen pass. What a juke move. And stiff arms out of bounds at the 14. Stevenson could have a game where it's like... 10 for 10 yards wise one yard per carry and i still believe he's goaded it's just the team hasn't really played around well around him as faulkner shows off a little bit of athleticism outrunning the defense for the touchdown it's not common you have that option kind of stick uh route that's just you know getting touchdowns from you know 15 yards out you maybe five yards out or something but not that deep slips off the tackle and scores Barring the clock situation, I'm actually in a pretty uh, pretty uh, comfortable mood with that offensive drive. It was a pretty good drive. That tight end's moving. Oh, we can't get him. Good chase down by Jones, who's been everywhere so far. Except for on the interception stat list. He's had a couple of chances and just hasn't done it. Well, we try to come in there with a massive blitz. Give him the free short pass. From the 46-yard line, Beasley playing the hook. Got to pick up the running back, which we do. He had, catches it, which is bad for them. So I didn't go for the hit stick because I just wanted to make sure we get the tackle and I want him to catch that ball. Gain nothing, lost the clock. Ah, that's a good play, though. Almost a first down, too. Just don't give up the touchdown. That's all we got to, you know, ask. That's all we asked for. Should have been a 17-3 game, mind you. That out is so clean. Did we get it? Stolen by Jones! Too late of a throw. We almost got there with Jelani, and we were late. The ball came out flat, came out late, and that's going to be another takeaway for this defense. Not a lot of clock, but enough to, you know, if we see a look, we'll take it. That's right into the defense. I don't know why. I, can we hit him, please? I don't know why I thought I could fit that in there. I just couldn't. I simply couldn't. I got to be honest with you. I also, I think a part of me didn't see him because of the logo. He never comes out of that logo. It's the exact colors, obviously. And I, I honestly just don't think I've seen him. Because when I was releasing that, I thought it was the uh, underneath guy I had a throw over. Running backs open. We're covering that deep. Don't even need to. Is that a fumble or is that a pick? Hopefully it's an actual fumble. I don't know if that ball ever hit the ground anyways, though. 
did it? I'm curious to see what happens here, because this, I mean, it's going to be our ball. We had a chance to super sim if we wanted. It does touch the ground, but like barely. And the worst part is, even though we threw a pick, I got to keep trying. We're in a good position to potentially put up more points. Took a good right throw to Ramondre. Unfortunately, can't get out of bounds, but that's still nine. All right, another quick throw to Faulkner, potentially. It's a little underthrown. Wow, he needs to catch that. Would hate to waste my last time out on a short throw, but I want to get this conversion. Please, Faulkner. What a catch to the 27-yard line. They're saying to uh, kick the field goal, and honestly, with the way we've played on offense, all the turnovers we've had this season, probably not wrong. Let's get him in the backfield for a block. Go out route for Faulkner. Can't keep this in play, obviously. It's Polk. Really? Did Polk really just have to catch it like that? Oh, that's so sucky. And obviously we run out of time, no field goal. Obviously my intention was to throw that to the corner. Ball didn't get as deep as I was hoping it would. And then obviously we have to go for the you know catch. The hope would be he goes up for the catch. It's too hard of a catch. The ball goes down. It's a field goal. And of course Polk, he holds on. <laughs> he could have broken the tackle, which would have been insane, but that sucks. Either way, it was an okay half, I suppose. And honestly, don't really care too much about what the other teams are doing because outside of, you know, the the two and the three seed, it doesn't really matter too much in those games. I don't even think they're going to show us, so it's kind of irrelevant. Which they, of course, do not show us. I think, you know what? We're going to run the ball. I think our pass game has just been a disaster. I really do. Taekwon Thornton on the return. Don't really see a lead block anywhere, though. <laughs> not to say it. I don't see a lead block, but sure. All right, as much as I said to run inside, I think they're kind of ready for it. Either way, we're going to do it anyways. And even if they're ready for it, they're not really ready for Ramondre Stevenson for 11. They might be ready for the run call, but they're not ready for the running back. We're going to run this left because Quentin's not there. And we're going to have to run it right after him. Oh, my God. Look at the power. Six yards gained. Shallow cross. We really haven't had much time to throw anything that's, you know, kind of long developing. We're going to throw it right to Faulkner, who... I don't know why he's, like, putting the ball that low, but sure. And thankfully it doesn't matter, but still. In case it did, that would have sucked. Virgil can't hit the throw because we have no time. I think we did the right thing stepping out, making it a cleaner look. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough time to throw. Screen pass. Nobody is on uh, the linebacker, Mosley, who actually makes us lose more yards by breaking the tackle. Good blocking, fellas. And we've kind of already exhausted our options on the screen. We already did a screen, and it didn't work. Let's just take a shot to Polk to punt, if not anyways. I thought he caught that. I mean, we're already in pretty good punt range anyway, so it's not like I need to move forward. There was a couple of, like, underneath plays that might have been able to get us some yards, but... We don't really need too many yards. I hate this camera crap, though. Good defense to the 18-yard line. Yeah, I don't know why punts are, like, messing up the camera view all of a sudden, but they just are. Barmore. Can't get a swat. That's a really good throw. I don't know what we're diving at. You can't play any better than Beasley did against a guy like Miles... Uh, not Miles Garrett. Garrett Wilson. What a throw. I mean, that's just undefendable. Beasley was in amazing coverage, considering he's a linebacker going against one of the better receivers in the league. Oh, I kind of wish Beasley wasn't so goaded. We would have had a huge hit by Jelani, but hey, good tackle. I'm not going to tell him, hey, don't do not do that, man. What are you doing? No, just if you got a tackle, take it. Oh, my God. Thank God the curl route wasn't a streak. Throws it away. It's third and 13. Good defense. Come with zero. This is going to be a lot to ask for. That is not a good decision as we are going to force him out of bounds. That'll be a punt. Didn't play him, uh, you know, close because he's a big guy. I don't want him to get like a possession jumper on us. Wait. When did I say for him to do that? Jalen Polk targeted 10 times so far. Only has five catches, but 72 yards to go with it. Obviously, we see Polk as uh, a goon, which we should because he is. Stepping up, Drake May, not going to have much room, but does spin forward for five. This is going to be a game where if we win, it's because the Jets are just the Jets and not because we deserve to win. Just run away. Going to just go for that first down. I thought maybe we had a chance to break it all the way outside, but let's just get that first down. Ten-yarder. They refuse to show us the numbers from Ramondre, though, which is a little sucky. A little play-action boot. Polk wide open. Finally, we got somebody open, open. 
Oh, if Polgren had a little bit better of a block there, he would have just broke two sets of ankles for a massive touchdown. That is still a great throw and a great catch and a great, you know, run after the catch. Douglas, perfect throw on the run. Here he goes. On the move, catching the ball cleanly to the 21-yard line. A little bit of a drive, finally. This drive switch play is always, like, very intriguing to me, but it doesn't really work out. We'll go back to the drag again. Really good blocking by Faulkner, and Polk is in for the touchdown. That could be the dagger with the way the Jets are playing on offense. you got to remember, they shouldn't even have a touchdown. It should be a three-point, you know, game for them. They should only have a field goal. This is the kind of, you know, return we were hoping for from Jalen Polk. He's having a much better game than most of the games he's had since returning from injury. Facing third and inches, we're coming with a little bit of the, the blitz. They're not going to actually. Quick throw to the outside. What a catch by Conklin. Literally a yard needing inches. All right, end of the third quarter. It's going to be the start of the fourth on a third and three, I believe. We have still been far from perfect. And once again, if we keep playing like the way we're finishing the season out... I don't know how far we're going to make it into the playoffs. I really don't, but you just never know. I think we just got to play it safe. You know what? We're going to we're gonna play it, I mean, maybe even for the rest of this game, which maybe won't work as well because they're going to be, you know, hyper-fixated on the short game run or short pass. But we need to just play it so short. Tons of run call. Beasley, please. What a hit. Beasley's got to pick that off. But tons of short passes, tons of short runs, and you know what? If it's the second or third quarter and it's still not working, then we adjust. We can't come out the gate swinging. It just hasn't worked for us. We got to just slowly develop our game as nobody's going to be out there. Brees Hall, nice hit down to the 15. The Jets aren't out of this game, but you got to assume we're in a really good spot to finish up. Double move inside. That's not where he's going to go. Huge hit on the slot wide receiver, Gibson, to the four yard line. Just trying to make it hard on him. If we can't get it, you know, in, if we can't stop him from getting into the end zone, at least make them earn this. Waste a couple more minutes if possible. Back of the end zone. Oh, who dropped that? Was that Beasley? Come on. I genuinely can't believe the amount of drop picks we've had, though. Usually it's our opponents that drop our, you know, the picks. As Gamble 101 overruns it, and Brees Hall makes him look like a little punk. And they'll be in the end zone. That was such a good play with Gamble, and we still couldn't get him. All right, Ramondre, you know the drill. Just run all the way down the field on him. That's what we're doing. And cut it back. What a move inside. Look at the moves. But he fumbles. You've got to be kidding me. That was a master class in vision cutting. And, of course, we fumble the ball, and the Jets are absolutely back in it. Was it Mosley? It had to be Mosley. It was Chuck Clark, the guy I've been talking crap about, of course. I mean, this was genuinely so clean. I mean, look at the moves. All those moves for what? To fumble. That's what. We force that throw in quick, and it will be knocked out. Good job, Gonzalez. From the 32, Beasley acting as deep safety. Get up there. Good tackle. It's going to be a third and four. Clock's no longer a concern, right? They just got to get scores. Before, it's like, okay, uh, we need to start scoring a little quicker. The clock is problematic. Now, unless they take all five minutes... Oh, I didn't know he was going to keep running. Brees Hall is going to finish. Oh, my God. Brees Hall is on a mission. Touch on Jets. All right, back to the ground. Hey, Ramondre, you want to not fumble the ball this time? And he gets no help. Yeah, this, this is the GG. We've lost. Say what you will, but you get to see the way the momentum's going, the way the game is gone. We're just, we're going to blow this game. Douglas. Consistent. Try to go down. Can't. Nice. Love when, you know, we just can't do what we want to do. Hit us late. I don't care. I just want to go down inbounds. That's all I ask for. Inside handoff, a lot of room. Ramondre, just don't fumble. Protecting that ball hard to the 44. We got ourselves like a kind of screen fake out type of play. And we're just going to run. We're just going to run. It works. Douglas, 44-yard touchdown. They really bit on the double pass aspect, and we just took off. 
I don't know who the receiver was that took that lead block, but what a play to Mario Douglas clutching up. Could be the game. And don't get me wrong, I think Ramondre would have been wide open. We just didn't have any time. We had a good block upfield, and we had no time. Perfect blocking. Got to him right as the ball touches our hands. Lead blocking. Faulkner went off. Oh, it was good teamwork. All right, fourth and five. Defense is doing a pretty good job. They're only at midfield as well. So even if they get it, this clock is really against them all of a sudden. And that little quick throw underneath. I can't believe McKenzie didn't step up for that. I get it. We're trying to defend the deep ball, but fourth and five, got to defend that first down as well. All right, single high. Probably not the best way to defend the end zone, but I do believe in our corners quite a bit. Curl route. Oh, my God, Gonzalez. Curl route. Shahid might be his first catch of the game, even. Let's just do cover two, man. It's probably the safest defense we can ask for. Oh, my God. Tavai. Unbelievable defense. I suppose cover four is pretty good at defending the end zone, too. Third inches. Couldn't get the press. Ah, oh, it's perfect. Perfect defense. That'll be picked off by Jones again. Who's got a chance? If you got a nice uh, block. Oh, look at the corner round. It was close. Jonathan Jones had an opportunity early to pick a ball off or two. Didn't get him and then picked off two later. Works out for us. And obviously with timeouts, still going to try to run the Oh, my God. Try to run the ball to win the game. If we would have limited our own picks, we would have actually had our dream come true. They would have had the same amount of picks as us, maybe more. Please, Faulkner. That was so risky. I wish that players understood the assignment. Like, instead of going deeper and deeper and deeper, like, sit in the open spot, man. You're open. Of course, running that ball just to get that last time out wasted. All right, from the 41-yard line, it's going to be a little zig on fourth and two. And they basically need to have a Hail Mary, like, right here. And even then, it's just they're not going to have enough time. With a quick throw to the outside. They do get out of bounds, but obviously outside of a Hail Mary, which they can't score 10 points from, the game will be over. I don't like the camera view, though. It's like, it seems like weirdly going. I don't know. Let's see if we can get a last second pick. Jonathan Jones for number three. The ball's a little overthrown. We're going to sit here in case it deflects back, which it doesn't. Good defense, and really that was the story of this game. Good defense. 31 to 21. Pick six for, uh, you know, McKenzie. A bunch of picks thrown for their quarterback, four or five of them. And ultimately a win and potentially, I think, the sealer for the division title. We definitely let it slip, but then came back a little bit and uh, just like that, regained the division title, get that bye week, then home field advantage for one game at least. And we're back in the uh, conversation again. Really not playing perfect football at all, especially on offense, but the defense is heating up at least. The defense has looked a lot better over the last few weeks, which is great. But, uh, yeah, if we play like this on offense in the playoffs, I don't know what to tell you. Still, we did climb back. We did improve. It's just those early you know, points in the game. we got to stop throwing those picks. Uh, Kelly did throw five picks like we did think. Ramondre was okay. You know, he had a lot of broken tackles, but he did have that fumble. Polk was great. Faulkner had some moments. Douglas was amazing. Defensively, bunch of pressure, a lot of interceptions, and a dub for the Patriots. And we're going to have some upgrades, but I'm going to wait until uh, next episode because there's going to be another standalone, and it's going to be a little bit of a shorter episode. This one will still have the stats and awards uh, tied to it, so it'll be technically about as long as normal, I'd imagine, because that kind of stuff does take a little bit of time to look at. And I obviously like looking at it. I don't know if you guys do, but it's cool to see how the season played out for every team and, uh, you know, obviously see the award wins we may have lined up for ourselves. But unfortunately, we know that our first opponent of hopefully many is going to be the Miami Dolphins in the wild card round. We end up with the fourth seed. They end up with the five seed. So not a huge difference, but we do get to host the game as opposed to being on the road. Could be a snowy game, which, of course, didn't really help us last time, but maybe we'll see uh of course i'm gonna kind of take a look at this mock draft three if we don't mind see where they project us and who they project us taking they have us at number 25 and they have us you know taking a tackle with all the issues we've had on the offensive line especially injury concerns i'm not completely opposed to that i'll be honest do get on when back speaking of though uh, and let's take a look at these numbers. Obviously, the I guess we'll take a look at the win-loss first. Stevenson, number one in rushing yards, which is nice. For a moment, he wasn't. 
Uh, but let's take a look at the NFL standings. See how it looks. So the Ravens are the number one team in the entire league. NFC side, the Eagles 13-4, Buccaneers are the two seed, Vikings three, pa Packers not four. I don't know, what was that like five probably? Cowboys, I think five or six. The Cardinals are like the four seed, I think. The Cardinals are the, yeah, four seed. The Niners are the seventh seed. I don't know. There's a lot of different seeding issues. Whatever happens there, it's it's a disaster. Of course, the only thing that matters is the fact that the uh, AFC is better, as you would expect. Now let's take a look at the numbers. Drake May, touchdowns, really good. Yards, pretty damn good. Interceptions, 26, terrible. Completion percentage, 62%, higher than I thought we would have finished, to be honest. Passer rating, under 100, which is not great, but 93 is... It's like above average quarterback or right around average, if you will. Yards per attempt aren't great either. Stevenson was unbelievable. He is that Derrick Henry type who just gets all of the carries. What do you want from him, right? Looking at the receivers because of injury. Faulkner ends up the number one, and he didn't even start every game. Of course, did have the most snaps in the end anyways, because obviously on all those runs, he's going to come in. But Polk would have uh, been up there had he got injured. Douglas was great for a slot. Baker was disappointing, i got to be honest. And then Polk, obviously injuries don't really count. Stevenson, over 2,000 yards total. Blocking, we had one sack allowed for Strange. On Wenu with two, but he missed quite a bit of games. Uh, Williams missed two, which is all right. Andrews missed three, fair enough. Blackwell, five for the left tackle spot, not bad. And then Caden Walls, who really didn't even play that much, gave up seven, which is painful. No guys at 100 tackles, but tackles for a loss. 20 for Uche, 19 for Ojulari. 16 for Tavaya, 10 for Mapu. No double-digit sackers, so maybe Edge is a position of need. Ojulari wasn't bad, Uche wasn't bad, and he, of course, got injured again. But we need somebody to get into the double digits consistently, right? Picks, Gonzalez with 7, 6 for McKinney, uh, McKinsey, uh, Tavai and Jones and Peppers with 4. Ironically enough, Jones had 2 last game. 2 picks for Dial, 1 for Mapu, Gamble, and Duggar. What about Force Fumbles? We've had a few of those. 1 for a bunch of guys. Two recoveries for Beasley. Touchdowns defensively. Two for Gonzalez, one for McKenzie, one for Peppers. Safeties, one for Tavai, Uche, and Bentley. No blocks, of course. Kicking, Joey Salina. Let's take a look at how he played. Missed one kick, unfortunately, out of 14. Missed one extra point because it was blocked. That one miss was from 50+. plus, So a little justified. Behringer, more of a directional punting than deep punting kind of season. Taekwon Thornton and Harper, both with kick return touchdowns. Similar in return yardage and average, but Taekwon was technically better. And then punt return, didn't really have many chances with that. A little bit of a spoiler alert. I kind of feel like Mahomes is probably going to win MVP. 46 touchdowns, 6 picks. Baker, 40 touchdowns, 16 picks. Dak, 38 with 17. Goff, 29, 18 uh, with 8. Hurdy had a great year, though, as well. So did uh, McCarthy. Uh, who had the lowest pick totals of, like, eligible players? Lamar Jackson, probably Mahomes. That, that season's unbelievable. He's definitely winning MVP. Stevenson. The touchdowns are down, though, so you argue he probably doesn't win best running back, but still had the rushing yards uh, title, which is great. Had the most yards per game, obviously. Didn't really fumble the ball much, which is nice. Only one fumble, which actually just happened that game. Would have been the like most anti-clutch fumble I've ever seen. Broken tackles. His numbers are almost double that of the next highest guy. And, of course, his yards after contact are way higher. That's unbelievable. And the craziest part is his longest on the season was a 34-yarder. Talk about Mr. Consistent. He's a goon. Those numbers are crazy. Those numbers are insane. Yards, uh, where was all the tight ends? Were we the number one with Faulkner? Could be a dev up if so. Number two, I think. No, number three. Even Ferguson. Kind of surprised with that one for Ferguson. Ayuk had a crazy year, though. We're the longest catch of the season. 93 for Jordan Addison. Shaheed with 88. Most yards after the catch go to Godwin. Most yards per catch goes to Baker, Thrash, and Ayuk. You know, it's up to you who, if you want to decide that Baker even counts. I think so. 43 catches. Just didn't have many targets. That's the problem. Most sacks allowed, Deontay Irons, the rookie. 22 sacks allowed. Why didn't they pull him? That's a crazy number to give up. Tackles for a loss. He had uh, Miles Garrett at the number one spot. Tackles, Warner with 134. Sacks, Parsons, way higher than anyone else with 26. Picks to Ron Bland and Dean with nine apiece. 
That's actually kind of crazy. What about the kicking? Who is the best kicker? Uh, probably Butker, I suppose, who had the longest of the season. 58 for Harrison Mevis. Then average punt. Dixon was the best. Where was the long? Did they get a long? Longest punt. 74 for Dixon. Well, definitely the best punter in the league. Kick return, punt return game. Obviously, it's going to be us because we have the most yards. Same touchdowns. And then punt return touchdowns. There was two on the year. Now for the big juicers. The yearly awards. Of course, MVP goes to Mahomes. No one is surprised. Coach of the year, we're number two to Harbaugh. I can kind of see Harbaugh as a really good season for them. Offensive player of the year, though. Even though with the lack of touchdowns, Stevenson... Number three, obviously, I guess the receiving game was really strong for him, like 500-plus receiving yards, some touchdowns there as well. Defensive player of the year, we were on the list at number four with Tavai, which is really impressive. Best offensive rookie of the year actually goes to our tight end, Trey Faulkner. So he's automatically a superstar dev player. He deserved it, though. He was great. Defensive rookie of the year, obviously, McKenzie, a bunch of uh, picks. So we won offensive and rookie defensive of the year. Uh, award wins, which is amazing. Gamble ended up making up to five. Beasley didn't play enough, but he could have been in there if he did. Best QB, we made the list at 10. That's not bad. Stevenson still won running back of the year, despite the fact that his touchdowns were really low compared to the other guys. A little surprised by that, honestly. Polk still, with all those touchdowns, made number 10. And then City So is a dev up guy. O line of the year. I don't know if I agree with that, but sure. Uh, Uche with seven for him being the best D lineman. Best linebacker, number three for Tavaya. Best DB, number one for Gonzalez, three for McKenzie, five for Jones, seven for Peppers, and then best kicker in number five. Obviously, the big reason why we are where we are right now is because of those DBs. All of those takeaways, given our offense, that always gives the ball away. Extra chances have been a massive help this season. And, of course, it has led to this moment right here, the wild card round against the Miami Dolphins, which will be next episode. If you guys are excited, maybe leave a like Subscribe if you're new. If you're not new, do appreciate your support on the channel. Follow me on Twitter, channel Pierre. Second channel, Pierre Plays for Nomadic Content. And that is going to be it for the regular season of Season 2. Now begins the playoffs. A lot of upgrades we have to get into. And hopefully, one of many games in this playoff run. Regardless, thanks for watching. All the guys come back for next video. But until next video, see